Hello and good day and how have you been? Hope you've had a great time. Okay, the previous video we looked into the introductory aspect of the overhead costing and I tried to make you understand the basis of apportionment. It is very very important because without an idea of the basis of apportionment, if you don't know how to apportion these values, you cannot treat any question under the primary method. Okay, so the basis of apportionment is very very important, and you only need it to treat the basis. Sorry, the primary method. Okay, so we have a question on the board. Olufemi Limited has three production departments, which is A, B, and C. Then and two services departments, X and Y. The following is the budget for May 2015. Here we have the question, okay? Then to present the solution, you can see I have a table on the board. And you will also know how to draw this table. You must present it to your, your solution this way. It's a must. So you need to know how to do it. Now let's go back to the question. You can see we have the particulars, total, A, B, C, then X and Y. It is the same thing that applies here, but the only difference here is because this is the solution to this question, we are now going to add a section for the basis of apportionment, okay? You can see that is what we did. Particulars, total, A, B, C, you have A, B, C, X and Y, okay? So take good note of that, you look at the question, you repeat the same thing, but you add a section for the basis of apportionment. So let us answer this question. We have the direct material, direct wages, factory and power, depreciation and overhead. And all these things are costs, are overhead cost items which must be apportioned. Okay? So, let us apportion this value. Now, looking at these departments, here we have the section for total. You can see we don't have any entry here. Okay? It simply means that this particular, the direct material has been apportioned to the product, to these departments already. So all we need to do is just to repeat these values here, okay? So, we have the direct material. This is for direct material. Please don't abbreviate in the exams. Try to write them in full, okay? So we have the direct materials, and for the total, it is given already, right? But this is 1,000 plus 2 plus 4 plus 2 and plus 1. This gives us what? This is 10,000, right? So the total, we have 10,000. Okay? Now, the basis of apportionment, it is given already. So, we'll just put dash because it has been given already. It has been apportioned already. So, how do we go about it? For Department A, we have 1,000. Department B, we have 2,000. Department C, we have 4,000. Department X, we have 2,000. And Department Y, we have 1,000. Okay? We don't share this because it has been given already. So we'll move to the next one, which is the direct wages. So we have the direct wages, all right? And it will have what? 5,000 plus 2 plus 8 and 1 and 2. This is a total of 18,000. So we have 18,000 here as the total, okay? So the basis of apportionment, nothing. It is given already. It has been apportioned. So what are the values we have there? We have 5,000. We have 2,000, we have 8,000, we have 1,000, and we have 2,000, alright? So the values has been given. Now we'll come over to the next one, which is the factory rent. So we have what? The factory rent. The factory rent. So how are we going to apportion the factory rent? So let us come back to the question. Let us come back to the question. Now, in the previous video, the introductory video, I told us, uh, I gave us some particular cost items, a list of cost items, and the basis of apportionment, all right? So, watch that video and understand that video very well before you start solving any question under the primary method, okay? So, to apportion the factory rent, we are going to make use of what? The area square. You see, we we'll have area. Area or meter square or square space or floor space. Any one of it you see, you make use of it. It is the same thing. So how do we go about this apportionment? Let me show us. Now, we have what? Factory rent, right? So, so in case the question asks you to show the workings, that is exactly what I want to do now. Now, for the factory rent, what are the values we have there? First of all, the total. The total is what? 4,000. So we have 4,000 here. 
the basis of apportionment is what we are going to apportion using what the area square so you write the area here area okay you can still add it up the m square the u uh -huh. so factory rent four thousand we are apportion using the area square meter right so what are the values we have from here we have for department a 500 200 500 250 and 500 now these values we have here we are going to add it up all right we are going to add it up so we'll go this way we are going to add 500 plus 250 plus 500 plus 250 and plus 500 now when we add up all these values it gives us what 2000 so we have 2000 here okay so to apportion each of them to apportion each of them we say this is for department a right for department a 500 we we'll bring the value 500 this is for department a now okay 500 this 500 will be divided by the total which we have here 2000 this is 2000 then it will be multiplied by 4000 all right 4000 so we'll get the value here okay now when we come for department b for department b it goes this way what do we have there? We we'll have 250 for department B. So it will be 250 divided by the total 2000 times the overall total here, which is 4000. And we'll get the answer for B. So when we come over to, for department C, department C is what? 500. So we have 500 divided by 2000 times 4000. And we'll get the total. Then the same thing applies to department X. For department X, what do we have as a value? 250. So we have 250. This will be divided by 2000. Then we'll do multiplied by what? 4000. And we'll have our value. Then we'll come over to department Y. We'll do the same thing again, which is 500. So we'll have 500. Will be divided by 2000 times 4000. Okay, so we are going to get a summation of everything we have here. Here we have what 1000, here we have 500, department C we have 1000, department X we have 500, and department Y we have 1000. So we are going to sum it up, you see. 1,000, 1 plus 1 is 2,000, this is 3,000, and this is 4,000. So it is the same value we have here, alright? It is the same value we have here. So what happens? Under department A, since we have 1,000, we are going to record 1,000 here. This is 1,000. For department B, we we'll record 500. For department C, we we'll record 1,000. For department X, we record 500 and for department Y we record 1000 so you can see that the summation of these values we have here gives us what 4000 okay so let us move to the next one the next question say we are done with this we have treated this and we have treated this the next one is power power and how are we going to apportion power all right to apportion power we are going to make use of what the horsepower of machine. You can see we have it here. The horsepower of machine. We we'll use that to apportion power. So we we'll continue. We we'll have power. All right. And what is the total? We we'll have there 2,500. And what are we making use of? Which basis are we making use of? The horsepower. So we we'll have what? Horse. Horsepower. Okay. So. We are going to apply the same formula, the same thing we did here, okay? I believe you've copied this out. Quickly copy it out, pause the video. So we'll clean it up and we'll continue. Okay, so what we're actually going to do is the same thing we did here. We are going to repeat it in this department again, right? We are going to repeat it here again. So, let's go. Power 2.5. Remember, these are the values we are going to make use of now. Right, horsepower of machine 50, 40, 20, 15, and 25. So, 
we'll record again as usual. We have what? Power. And what are the values we have under the horsepower? We have 50 plus 40 plus 20. Look at them. Plus 15 and plus 25. Okay? So when we add up these values, we have a total of 150. This is 150. So we'll follow the same process again. For department A, for department A, we say 50 divided by 150 times 2005. So this will give us the value for department A. Alright? So we'll come over to department B. We have what? 40. 40 divided by 150 times 25. This is 25 here, right? We'll come to department C. This is 20 divided by 150 times 25. And we'll have a total. So when we come to department X, department X, what is the value for X? We have 15. So 15 divided by 150 divided by 150 times 25 and we'll have the value then for y we'll have 25 divided by 150 times 25 okay so we're going to get the total then here we have 833.3 3. for the second one we have 666.7 for the third one we have 333.3 for the fourth one we have 250 and for department y we have 416.7 so these values we have here are what we are going to present in each of the departments so for department a we have 833.3 for department B, 666.7. Department C, 333.3. .3. Department X, we have 250. And department Y, we have 416.7. Okay? So that is it. And we are done with what? Power. We are done with power. So move over to the next one, which is depreciation depreciation and we have a total of 1000 so we we'll write down depreciation depreciation okay so how much is the total we have what 1000 now how are we going to value depreciation so let us come down again when we look at the sections we have the additional information you can see we have value capital value of assets all right so this depreciation will be valued with this, the capital value of assets. Remember in the basis of apportionment, I told us, all right? In the basis of apportionment, watch that video extensively. Understand the concept well. Those bases are really important. Because if you don't know how to apportion this using the right values, you're going to get the wrong answer. So ensure you watch that video continuously, continuously to have a better understanding. So how do we go about it? We have 1,000, right? So we're going to rub up this section again, so we'll show our workings for depreciation. So we're going to show our workings for depreciation, and it goes this way. So, depreciation. Depreciation. So what are the values we have there? We have what the, for the capital value assets we have 20, 40, 20, 10, and 10. So we add it up 20 plus 40 plus 20 plus 10 and plus 10. What are we making use of? Capital value of assets. So you write capital value of assets. Okay? Capital value of assets. So, we'll sum this up. This is 60 and this is 100. So, we have 100. And we'll follow the same process again. For department A, we'll have 20 
divided by what? The total we have here, 100 times the overall total, which is what? 1000. We get the answer. For B, 40 divided by 100 times 1000. For C, we have 20 divided by 100 times 1000. For X, we have what? 10 divided by 100 times 1000. And for Y, we have 10 divided by 100 times 1000. So we are going to get the value for each of them. So when we sum this up, we have what? 200. The next one gives us 400. Here we have 200. Here we have 100. And we also have 100. Okay? So bring these values up to this section again. Department A, we have 200. Department B, we have 400. Department C, we have 200. Department X, we have 100. Department Y, we have 100. You can see by the time we add up these values, it gives us 1000. So they must correspond. Each of them must correspond. If you add up everything we have here, it gives you 25. If you add this up, 4000. You add this up, this is the total. So it must give you the same value. All right? So let's go to the last one. Let's go to the last question. We are done with depreciation. And the last one is the overhead. The overhead. So we'll write again. This is the overhead. All right? And how much is the total? We have 9000. 9,000. So how do we apportion the overhead? We apportion the overhead using what? The machine hours. The machine hours. And how much do we have here? We have 9,000. So if you take a good look at it, you see that the values has been given already. 1,000 plus 2 is 3,000. 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, which is what we have here. So the values has been given already. We just pick it up and we make use of it. Okay? So, Overhead, we have what? 1,000. Okay, this is machine hours. So you write machine hours. So this is for machine hours. So what is the total we have there? 1,000. We have 2,000. We have 4,000. We have 1,000. And 1,000. Alright? So, as you can see, everything we have here has been apportioned. Everything we have here has been apportioned. These were the additional information which we used to apportion this, right? So everything has been apportioned. The next thing we do is to get the total, okay? We are going to get the total. So we are going to sum everything up to get our total. We get the total for department Y, the total for department X, for department C, department B, department A, and the grand total. Meanwhile, after summing this, after the summation you've done here, after adding up these values, the answer you have here should also be the same when you sum this whole total. So whatever we have here will be the total from here and will also be the same total from this value. See how it goes. If we add up everything we have here, it gives us 44,500. 44,500 for the total, okay? The next one gives us 9,033.3. The third one gives us 7,566.7. The fourth one gives us 17,533.3. Department X gives us 4,000. 850 and department Y gives us 5516.7. So punch your calculator and confirm this. By the time you add up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's going to give you 44, 5. By the time you add up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it's also going to give you 44,500. Alright? So if you sum them up and you get a different value, 
It means you've made a mistake somewhere or maybe you didn't apportion well, okay? So, this is the best way and this is exactly the steps to take to answer any question under the primary method. So you can see that the first video, the introductory video is very, very important. Try as much as you can to watch that video and understand the concept, okay? Secondly, this question already just told us to solve for the primary apportionment. Now, this same question can still ask us to show the redistribution, which is to solve for the secondary department. Anyhow it comes, just take note that this final value we have here, these values we have here, will become the allocated cost when it comes to the secondary apportionment, all right? It becomes the allocated cost when solving for the secondary department, depending on if you are solving for the simultaneous equation, you're solving for the algebraic method or the direct method, any of the methods you are solving with. This particular value, which we have here as our total, this value will serve as the allocated cost for each of the departments, okay? So, thanks for your time. And I believe that this video will go a long way to help you. ICANN students, university students, polytechnic students, as long as you offer cost accounting as a course, you need this video. And I wish you the best. Do have a lovely day. And remember, if you have questions or you need clarification, you send us a mail or you chat us up on WhatsApp and we'll definitely give you feedback and we'll assist you when necessary. Remember, to understand most of these concepts, you visit our website, we've written an article on this under the overhead cost. So you see the breakdown of how this cost goes and also the basis of apportionment. We all have them on the website for you. Do have a good day and thank you for your time. Remain blessed.